Hello Year 3, it's Mrs Dyer here again and I'm here to take you through your first science lesson of our new topic. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen and hopefully you should start to see that now. There we go. So a new science topic for our new term. Our science topic is all about humans and other animals. And what we're going to be looking at first is food and eating and all different types of food groups and nutrition. And this ties in really nicely with our DT topic um, and your geography topic that you're going to be starting next week. Okay, let's move on. Here is your date and what. So in a new, on a new page in your book, if you'd like to write today's date and the vault, just pause the recording for a moment so that you can get that done. So our walk today is to explain why animals, including humans, need the right type of nutrients. Now, there might be a word in the walk there that you don't understand. Let's hope by the end of the lesson that you do understand what nutrients are. Have a look at the steps to success underneath, because that's going to help us achieve our Walt today. So the first one, I can explain how plants obtain food. Maybe you'd like to have a think about that. How do plants get food? Do they eat? I can explain how animals, including humans, obtain food. Do we do it in the same way that plants do? I can demonstrate I understand the difference between how plants and animals obtain food. So there's a hint there. We are not the same as plants. I can explain the difference between food groups and types of nutrients. And finally, I can explain what types of nutrients humans need. Okay, let's have a look at this first slide. Why do living things need food? What do we need food for? And there are some examples here of what we need food for. We need food to grow. Plants don't start off as plants. They would start off as a seed and grow into a seedling and then get bigger and grow into a plant. Once upon a time, all of you were small babies. And since then, you have grown. You haven't finished growing yet. You're probably somewhere around about here on our little chart. We also need food to be strong. It gives you energy to run around at playtimes. And we also need food to be healthy. Here's a picture of a nice sunflower. How does this sunflower get its food? It doesn't go shopping. It doesn't eat food. So what does it do? Well, plants go through a very, very complicated process called photosynthesis. And we'll be learning a little bit more about that when we do plants in the second uh, term after half term. So how do plants obtain food? Plants actually make their own food and that is called photosynthesis. They use water, sunlight and carbon dioxide, which is a gas, and they go through a very complicated process, kind of mixing all of those things together, and it produces the food or energy in their leaves. And that's how plants get their food. Are we the same? Do we use water and sunlight and carbon dioxide to get our food? What would happen if we tried to do that in the same way that plants do? Well, you can probably guess it wouldn't work. We can't use water and sunlight and carbon dioxide to make food. We can't make our own food like plants do. So how do we get food into our bodies? By eating and drinking. That's how we get food and drink into our bodies. These are some of the different kinds of foods that we need. Lots of them here. This diagram you might see a lot over the next few weeks. And these are called food groups. It's where foods can be put into different groups. How many of these do you think you might know? 
have a look at the foods in each of the groups. What might you call that group there? It's got pasta, bread, rice, potatoes, cereal. This group here has got lots of fruit and vegetables in it. This group has got milk and cheese and yogurt. This small group here has got some butter or margarine, I think, and some oil. And this group here has got fish, meat, beans, and eggs. Hmm. Do you think you'd be able to name some of those groups? Here's a little challenge for you, and I'm going to do it as well. Go and have a look in your cupboards or your fridge. See if you can find some of those foods. You ready? Go. Okay, I'm back. Okay, I'll just give you a couple more moments to see if you can get some of those foods in there. And I'll share mine with you as well. Okay, I'm gonna start sharing mine. Don't worry if you're not back quite yet. You could always pause the video for a moment. Okay, my first one is some rather nice cheese that's been left over from Christmas. Which group would this go into? Oh, I can see it there. It would go into the group with cheese and milk and yogurt. Not Mrs. Dyer's favorite food, but here are some bananas. Which group would they go into? Ah, oh, I can see bananas there on our food group. So that would go with the fruit and vegetables. Some very nice crisps. Hmm. Which group would these go into? Now I know crisps are made from potatoes. So would they go into the group with potatoes and bread and pasta? But also I know that crisps are made with quite a lot of fat and oil. So would they go into the group with the butter and the oil? Hmm, I'm not sure about that one. Let's finish with a nice easy one. Here are some nice green beans. Again, these would go into the, <coughs> excuse me, the fruit and vegetables group. Have a look at some of the ones that you found. Would you be able to put those into the different food groups? And like me, have you got any that are a little bit tricky? Hmm. Let's have a look at the next slide, see if that helps. Here are our food groups that we've just looked at. And did you get the right names for them? So here we've got bread, rice, potatoes, and so on. And these are quite starchy foods, the sorts of foods that fill you up. This group here, you might call your dairy products or dairy food, because a lot of them are made from milk and milk comes from a cow and it, they need to get the milk in the dairy. Oils and spreads, so that's with our oil and butter or margarine, meat, fish, eggs, and our fruits and vegetables. So here are the food groups for this diagram here. Hopefully you are able to get lots of those correct and maybe put some of your foods that you got from your cupboards and fridge into those groups. But there are some foods which are a little bit confusing like my packet of crisps. Also, what about my cheese? Now I know cheese is made from milk, but also cheese is very, very fatty. So maybe that should be in the other group as well. Hmm. Okay, so in science, sometimes we use those food groups to put group, uh, foods into different groups. But if we were being a little bit more scientific, we would actually look at this diagram here, which looks at the nutrients which are in the foods. So there is a slight difference between these two diagrams. So these are food groups and these are types of nutrients. And these words down the side are a little bit more scientific. And we can look at what is in a food or what a food is made up of. So these foods at the top, like bread, pasta, apples and potatoes, 
they have a lot of carbohydrate in them. These foods here, meat, fish, beans, yogurt, they contain a lot of protein. Fats, well, look at that group. Nuts, oils, avocados, butter. Mm, I can see chocolate in that group as well. And then along the bottom here, we've got vitamins and minerals. So vitamins, lots of your fruit and vegetables will be in that group. Minerals, we can see milk is now in this group. Water and fiber. So these are the nutrients which are in foods. And this is called the nutrient pyramid. So there are seven types of nutrients. There we can see them there. Most foods contain more than one type of nutrient. So this is why this way of um, grouping the foods is a little bit more scientific. So my cheese, not going to go into a dairy group anymore. This would now be in the fat group. That's because the most nutrients in cheese is fat. My beans would go into the vitamins group. My bananas, can you see where that one is? Oh, this goes into two groups because it contains a lot of both. It contains minerals and they contain a lot of fiber. And what about my chocolate crisps? It is made from potatoes, but I think it's probably going to go into the fat group because it does contain a lot of fat. So an example on here is cereal. Now we know that cereal does contain a lot of carbohydrate, but it also contains a lot of fiber. And that is the main nutrient that that is giving you. So that's why it's in the fiber group. Other things for you to remember, Vegetables contain a lot of water. So that's why in this group here, we've got things like broccoli. Broccoli, very good for you because it does contain vitamins, but it also contains a lot of water. Let's just go through each of the groups very quickly because we need to know why we're eating these foods and what nutrients they're giving our bodies and what those nutrients do for us. So here is the protein group. Proteins help your body to grow and repair itself. So as children, you need a lot of protein in your diet at the moment because you're doing a lot of growing. And also when you cut yourself, when you fall over, your body needs to repair. So you also need protein to help with that. Foods which are high in protein are meat, fish, beans, and yogurt. You've also got eggs in the picture there. So that's what proteins do for you. What about carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are the foods which give you energy. That's why it's really important to have something like cereal, porridge in the morning, because that's going to give you energy for the morning. So foods high in carbohydrates, bread, pasta, fruit, and potatoes. The next type of nutrient are the fats. These also give you energy and also help to keep your body nice and warm. Foods high in fats are nuts, oils, avocados, butter, but look, we've also got that chocolate there, like I said before, and cheese, very high in fat. Oh, and there's my crisps there. Very important group, the vitamins. Vitamins help to keep your body healthy. Foods high in vitamins are oranges, carrots, beef, nuts, lots of fruit and vegetables in this group. And minerals, minerals also help to keep your body healthy. Foods high in minerals include milk, spinach, salt, and sweet corn. We've also got a banana there. One for you maybe to remember, milk. What's milk good for? Milk is good for your teeth and your bones because it contains a mineral called calcium and calcium helps very strong teeth and bones. And I always used to remember that milk is white and your teeth and bones are also white. That's what it helps to keep healthy. 
Now, this seems quite a strange one to think of as a nutrient. How can water be good for your body? Well, water helps everything to move through your body and get rid of waste at the other end. It's an essential nutrient for your survival. While it's really important to drink plenty of water, lots of foods also have water in them. So you should be drinking water every day, but also foods contain water, such as tomatoes, cucumbers, lettuce, and strawberries. And our final group, our final nutrient group is fiber. Fiber helps you to digest all the food that you have eaten. It doesn't actually provide you with any nutrients or goodness itself. It just helps everything else move through your body. So foods that are high in fiber are cereal, apples, whole grain bread, and lentils. There's our banana there as well. Okay. So what do those nutrients do for you? So you can fill this in on the sheet if you're able to print it out at home, but otherwise on the next screen, you could have a go at joining them up just with your finger or doing it in your head. And then I will give you the answers. So at home, you can also mark your own. So on the left-hand side, you should be able to see the type of nutrient, protein, carbohydrate, fats, vitamins, minerals, water, and fiber. And then on the right-hand side, what does that do for us? Why do we need those nutrients? Okay, so if I show you the next screen, that's what your sheet looks like and you need to just join them up to show what those nutrients do for you. There is also a go deeper, which asks this question here. It says, keeps you healthy. What do you think that actually means? Could you put that in a more scientific way? Okay, you might want to just pause the recording now so that you can have a go to this activity. And I'm now going to give you the answer. So the first one was done for you. We've got water and water moves nutrients in the body. It cleans the waste, it helps move everything through. Protein, what it does for you, it helps you grow and repairs your body. Give yourself a tick if you've got that one correct. And carbohydrates, carbohydrates give you energy. And fats and oils, they also give you energy. Vitamins keep you healthy. And minerals also keep you healthy. And finally, there should only be one left. So fiber helps you to digest your food. Okay, well done everybody. Hopefully you got all of those correct. Don't forget to put all of those foods back in your cupboards and your fridge, otherwise you will be in trouble. And I shall look forward to seeing you for the next science lesson. Bye-bye.